This right here is seriously the only thing I would use this build for, that and Pintle skill runs. However, it does farm this area amazingly well, even at very low gear. But, but most people are just gonna use this for a three part tall rush just set until they can then gear it out for a full lightning sorceress, which is obviously the better sorceress build. But for, yeah, Ancient Tunnel, this is amazing. You are pretty much just gonna be one of the best farming classes in this specific area. Also, if you're able to get some faster cast rate to really find, uh, yeah, the Ancient Tunnel fast from the waypoint. But seriously, how bad can it be? Surely I can just kill a few mobs down here. Nope, I can't cause of coal immunes. They're just everywhere. Honestly, playing a sorceress with only one elemental, that's just so bad. So here at the start of the video, I wanted to mention I was following a superior Vita Maxbox Sorceress Guide. The Blizzard Sorceress is actually a great PvP build, and I would also say it's one of the most fun ones. Cause just, you know, getting that perfect aim on a Blizzard, I find that to be a fun uh, mechanic. Also why I enjoy uh, the Frozen Orb Sorceress for PvP. But yeah, a lot of people are only really gonna make these ones for, you know, endgame gear uh, due to PvP. So a lot of Sorceress are aimed towards, yeah, PvP fully. And uh, yeah, I will have this uh, link in the description below. I also wanted to quickly mention that a lot of people are either gonna play them with uh, Energy Shield. There's quite a few variations with uh, Energy Shield. And then of course the Max Block variation where you will be using uh, Storm Shield on. That's a fun little thing, you know, getting Max Block uh, on a Sorceress build. Um, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be following the caster setup. Uh, in my case, it's going to be this one here. So yeah, his guy was pretty well uh, done, and I just wanted to mention that I was following this one. So then, hello everybody, this is Juntas. Today we're going to take a look at Blizzard Sorceress. This is going to be the full vitality variation. I'm also going to be focusing mostly on damage. So let's first take a look at the stats here. Enough strength just for your monarch. You could perhaps consider some energy if you don't use an inside mercenary, but more on that later. And then full points into vitality. I'm gonna get like 2.9 or so, it's plenty. You really don't need uh, you know, more than maybe 2,000 to really make the build work. Those with really high gear can probably reach as much as 3,500 life, but that's, yeah, that's kinda a little overkill in my case. My defense is also getting a nice boost from Shiver Armor. It helps using something like the Ormus Ropes that has some defense. Then I'm also able to cap my resistance, even cold resistance that gets a nice boost from the, the snow clash build here. So it was a bit hard to cap the resistance, but more on that later. But that's pretty much it for the stats. And so let's move on with the stats. Almost 16,000 blister damage, that's amazingly high. I really didn't think I was gonna reach maybe 15,000. This is as much as a gear to yeah, Hamer Paladin or something like that. The glacial spike damage is also very good. Um, honestly, you're just one-shotting mobs if they're getting hit. On players 8, I think Venom Lords and like Chaos Sanctuary, they might get free-shotted or so. Not quite one-shotted, uh, if you were looking for like an example on players 8. But still, that much gold damage, it just hurts anything on players 1. It's absolutely amazing to see, just like the instant they get hit from Blizzard, down they go. But let's take a look at the skills here, starting off with the cold. You're going to be choosing between either Frozen Armor, Shiver Armor or Chilling Armor. I just prefer Shiver Armor because it freezes and also gives the most defense uh, between the three ones here. Um, yeah, that's kind of up to yourself. Again, I, I just really like uh, getting the most defense out of these armors and the freeze is very, very good as well. And then maxing out all the synergies to Blizzard. It's a very cost heavy skill build. Um, really getting that much damage in Blizzard is maybe a bit overkill. But uh, yeah, it's kind of fun to see this much damage. But yeah, it takes a lot of these points here, get maxing out all those synergies, it's quite bad. And then you can also put one point into Frozen Orb. You don't really need it, but it is a kind of cool backup spell to have. Especially for maybe even more boss damage than uh, yeah, Glacial Spike spamming, just if you're really aim aiming it well. Because I guess that Frozen Orb will do more damage on single target than even a glacial spike if you know you can aim it really well into a boss or something like that so it's a decent enough uh, ability for single target and then cold mastery is just you know 100% is plenty 100% would be 17 uh, skills uh, you really don't need more than 17 slash 100% for pvm pvp of course you would be maxing this ability 
And for the lightning trees, you just want static field, telekinesis, and teleport. You could also perhaps consider something like thunderstorm or something, but it would be kind of a waste of points. And then the fire tree is of course a worm. I believe I even did remaining points into worm. So it was either a choice between worm or maxing points into zero armor or doing a really strong frozen up. I just went with worm because this build reduces a ridiculous amount of mana. And with a yeah, a little mana talk going, I think I just kind of want to show that off now. So this is pretty much the reason to consider maxing out worm with your remaining points. You can see right now that I don't have my inside equipped on my mercenary and I can just kind of yeah, show you the the managed usage. It just goes down so fast. So worm is really needed. That together with uh, inside helps a lot. But as you can see, even with my inside on very high worm, I'm still able to burn a lot of mana. In heated combat situation, it would definitely go down faster than I can regen it. So it's a bit fun to see just how mana intensive this build is. I believe this is the most mana intensive build in Diablo 2. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I only think that the Hammer Paladin uh, can, can compare to this one. So you really want to use an inside mercenary on this particular sorceress. Um, if you're you know, doing one elemental sorceress, inside wouldn't really help that much either. Except if it was lightning, and yeah, I can also just mention that the best inside setup in my case, uh, or my uh, you know my point of view at least, is a fresher just because it hits really fast. It's just nice, and then an inside when an attack speed increased dual and a treasury, so we hit really fast with a fresher and treasury. Uh, I like that setup a lot. But that's it for the skills, and so let's take a look at the gear. We're going to be starting off some stats items first. A Reaver's Tall setup is actually pretty good on this build if you just want maximum damage and you can do without inside. In my case, I just felt the most comfortable with uh, yeah, an inside mercenary. Sandstorm Tracks are also a decent choice as well as tri Boots. However, I found the best boots just to be Elders. I really just want the yeah, the most life, the fastest faster run walk and the fire resistance helps out a lot as well. So yeah, Elders Boots was the best choice for me. Um, yeah, you can also consider Bulkatos Wedding or Stone of Jordans over Bulkatos Wedding Bands if you need the mana. I don't really need the maximum mana that much. It's more about just having regen and that is covered now. Um, yeah, consider some faster hit recovery, small charms and whatnot if you need it. But that's pretty much it for these dice items. For the gloves, we're going to be using a Triangles. They are very good because of the cold resist. They just help out so much in my case. They're just perfect for this, uh, yeah, this particular build. Mage Feast is also not really that useful. So cold resist on the gloves, that's just 10 out of 10. Bulkatos Sweating Band, just because of the plus to all skills and whatnot. You don't really need the faster cast rate since we're only going for 105%. Snow Class is just really good for damage. And again, we don't really need the stats that the rug build gives us. Uh, again, just because the faster cast rate is not really needed and so forth. Elder's Boots, again, really good boots for this uh, particular need. Death's Phantom with a 5-5 five, five, uh, cold. Um, really just prioritize getting good stats on this one. It's a very high amount of damage and it's very important also for the resistance, as you can see here. Orm's Ropes with a 5-5 five, five, cold facet. Blizzard one. A Spirit. This one... I actually do believe, yeah, you actually did need a 35% faster cast rate, which obviously makes it a little hard to acquire. So getting a 35%, uh, that cost a little bit, as well as the, yeah, the Depths Phantom and almost Ropes, obviously. But I always hate trading for 35% faster cast rate spirits. It can be a bit tricky. And then a the nice little omelet here. This one just gives, uh, yeah, cold and poison resist, which I need to cap it out. Then it also gives me life strength. 10% faster cast rate is very important, so I'm able to hit 105%. And then the Nightwing's Wheel here, also really good stats on this one, can help out a lot, but it's not as crucial as I would say the other items. And then on Switch, I just have a call to arms. And that's pretty much it for the year. So let's go have some fun on Players 8. This is really where the build can shine with all that cold damage. I also wanted to quickly mention the inventory, just some, yeah, some random stuff here. However, I did go with the 60% faster hit recovery breakpoint. That does help out a little bit using something like this one. But uh, enough for gear. Let's do some fun here in 
yeah, a Carol Century. There are going to be a few cold immunes and whatnot from the caster mobs, but it's still okay. So let's test the damage out here on some Venom Lords. As you can see, the damage just off the charts. Players 8 Venom Lords just dying in 2 or 3 hits. It's so cool to see. Let's do a bigger pull up here. Hate so many cold immunes just everywhere. It's fun. You never really notice there's so many cold immunes uh, in Diablo 2 until you really notice them playing this build. Let's try up here as well. Man, the mercenary just rip. It seriously can't survive. At least not without the fate prog it. But I think that's enough for that area. Let's move on to something a little more, yeah, fun to showcase. So of course I have to try out this area. There are no cold immunes at all up here. So let's have some fun here. <laughs> the mercenary already died. Uh, without fate prog it, it's really a bad job. But yeah, this area does hurt. Ah, and of course there's a little cold immune there on the talk one. Yeah, I'm not really that impressed with the survival and tankiness. You really do have to, yeah, be a little careful. But that's it for this little area. It can do it, but maybe it's not that pretty. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they really do die fast, even on players 8. So some final thoughts on the build. One of the things I always enjoyed about Blizzard is that you, when you hit level 24 uh, on your sorceress living through normal, that's when you get the ability first, uh, Blizzard, and it's just so amazingly strong at that level 24 level. And that continues all the way to pretty much end game, especially uh, when you hit hell and you really have no gear at all, you quickly realize that Blizzard is just the way to go. A low geared lightning sorceress is not really gonna do as much damage as a Blizzard sorceress, that's for sure. I honestly think with no gear at all, you can still always reach like 3000 damage on a blizzard sorceress. It's really great. And that's enough to pretty much clear any health uh, content with 3000 damage. So for low geared, it's just the way to go. Uh, I would also think that uh, most people enjoy the build for yeah safety reason because kiting, freezing and stuff like that. It just makes you yeah safe when you really do only have... I don't know, 1000 to maybe 1200 life or something. It's incredible, uh, you know, how dangerous hell is with no gear at all. So sticking to Blizzard is probably just the way to go. And I think that's uh, about all I wanted to say for this one. You know, it's a fun build. It does so much damage, but the cold immunes are just everywhere, which ruins it. Unless you're, you know, only farming specific areas, again, like the ancient tunnels. Uh, I enjoy the build, I think it's fun, especially just because of the whole aiming mechanic of Blizzard. You know, it takes a bit of skill to kind of aim uh, Blizzard into a frozen pack with Glacial Spike. But, yeah, uh, cold immunes are just everywhere, especially on this pull here. <laughs> Can't really deal with this much cold immunes, gets way too dangerous. But that's pretty much it, so thank you so much for watching everyone, and have a good one.